Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 248, December 15th, 2022. Tomorrow's a big day. That's what we're going to talk about. This meeting is being recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Let's go talk about what we're going to talk about. Uh, we have a bunch of people in the channel uh, or in the chat hanging out. That's great. Love having you guys there. Uh, what are we talking about? We're going to talk about the Wix v4 release plan because tomorrow is another step in that plan. And then we'll do the issue review and triage uh, to, well, like we always do, except this time we'll talk about the release for tomorrow. And we'll take questions and comments after that. So uh, let's go ahead and review the review that we've reviewed many a time. Nothing really has changed in here, except I've updated a couple words to note that Wix4 preview one was completed on November 11th. Yay, went well, all that was good. Uh, continue to get small bits of feedback on it, but I think RC1, we've captured a lot of bugs uh, and squashed them in RC1. And that, if everything looks like it goes well with the review, comes out tomorrow. Um, spoiler, I think we're going to be okay. Um, after that, we will be looking at a release in mid-ish January. It's a little bit later January, but uh, that would be RC2. And as we've said many, many a time, we will then release... Wix v4 as soon as we feel like we've got all the important bugs squashed. So we need to start getting people picking up releases. So uh, release candidate one coming out tomorrow. We'll talk about it again in the question comments after we do the review, but I want to get so everybody focused on the same page going, yes, this is where we're going. So let's go jump over to issue review and we'll do some triage. All right, over there. Bob, you taking notes? I uh, wasn't prepared to take notes on the 4.0 issues, but I can get there. I don't know that we're going to have to take notes on these. I just kind of want to go over them. And, oh, well, in uh, that case, I'm ready. Yeah, all right. Uh, so here are the five issues that are currently open against V4 that we know about. We're going to triage the next set of issues here. Um uh, Sean, do you want to talk about yours is on top? So do you want to talk about burn API documentation thoughts? Uh, do you want that RC one now? I know that all documentation stuff now is finally, I think in place, Bob did all that, um, work. Is that RC one or do we want to, make, I mean, it's documentation. We can basically update it anytime. Although no, this requires a build, right, Bob? Ah, all right. Uh, I'm, I'm jumping yeah. all over the place. <laughs> so. It does require a build. Um, in fact, um, something I noticed and did not update a bu in, in my bug that we'll discuss in the next triage session um, is that the web build, um, first of all, yes, the web build requires the assemblies um, and the XML documentation file that's built when you build the assemblies. Um, what's happening now is that the web build is not picking up the latest build on GitHub. It's only finding the one on nuget.org. So right now the documentation is at preview one Which and makes tomorrow sense. sometime it would be on RC one. Right. Um, I imagine we will want to, you know, make that, uh, pick up from, from the GitHub. Uh, package feed so that we can get, you know, almost instantaneous feedback. But yeah, the, the cycle is going to have to be update the documentation in the source tree, get a build, and then build the website. For the things that are on APIs, for things that are XML doc. All the other documentation is just documentation uh, and, and updating in time. Yes, that is correct. All right. So, Sean, any feelings? I'm mostly like I've created an RC2 bucket so that we can start putting things in there. I've already put a couple things in there. We'll talk about that. I'm just kind of looking at going, do you want to do this like today <laughs> or do we want to toss that in the RC2 bucket? It's your call. Well, this has been blocked until there was the process. So if you're telling me the process is ready, then the day before is not enough time for me to do that. What? Come on. 
So RC2. Great. Uh, the next one is check the latest cubes for compatibility. And this is a thing that we've been sliding out to do at kind of the latest um, time to get the latest cubes. Not yep. that I know that we're going to get anything between now and when we release. Well, this one in particular is it's good to wait as long as possible because it would be triggered by a Windows SDK update. Right. So, you know, between when I open the bug and today, there have been a couple of releases. If we push it out, will there be another one? Maybe. I don't know that there's a schedule I can, you know, yeah, I define don't. From, from the Windows release cycle. Anyway, so I've already dumped this one in RC2. I think when we get closer in RC2, we'll have, to, and after we get to RC2, we'll have a discussion about, is there an RC3? How long do we keep pushing these out? When do we just declare good enough, good enough? But that's not RC1. RC2 is definitely a place to have that conversation. So that's an RC2. Um, pushing the Wix uh, toolset installers to Winget. This I'm going to do in RC1. So I just need the RC1 build before I can uh, finish this. So that's staying in RC1 and it's a thing I'm doing tomorrow or you know this weekend kind of thing. I need the RC1 build first. So uh, this will be going away after I finish that work. Uh, the DNC host generator, this is the same sort of thing as go and check and see if anything's gonna change in the core, but this is .NET build. So presumably that's not much changes until end of next year, given that they're on yearly releases. Um, perhaps. Um... I mean, it's not like they make no changes, but That's true. probably. That's true. They do dot releases. That's true. All right. Again, we'll talk about this in RC2, same as that. We're kind of like waiting to see if the people that we depend on for these do something and react to them as late as possible to get the best goodness possible from them, or at least the latest from them. So that's what these two are going to hang out in RC2. Um this last one has a pull request open, so I think we probably could remove the triage. And I know, Sean, you were looking at it and um, discussing it. I assume this isn't going to be done for tomorrow. I don't know. Is it going to be ready for tomorrow? No. I haven't looked at it closely. No, it's not ready. All right. So, but it's close enough that we probably should go uh, back to... Uh, slide it to RC2 and it'll hopefully get done in the next couple, two, three weeks kind of thing, right? Yeah. All right, awesome. I will slide that to RC2. Uh, Ron asks, what is a cube file? Where is that? Uh, latest cubes, uh, six, five, six, seven. The cube files are the um, validation, static validations that the Windows installer team provides that are run as part of the Wix uh, MSI validate command, or as part of your MS build, there's the Windows installer validation uh, target that runs during your build, and it runs these cube files. Cube files are actually um, mini MSI databases with custom actions in them that execute against your database to do all the validation. So uh, the ICEs, sorry, all those ICE numbers that come out, the static validation, um, it's that thing. Uh, less style cop, more FX cop, but yeah. Anyway, style cop is more uh, Wix convert format, Jacob. But anyway, that's what a cube file is. It's a static analysis, and they come from the Windows installer team, so we want to try to get the latest. And they have had problems. I don't remember what the problem is at this point. Bob would be able to remember is the architecture problems or something. They have bugs in them, and we're trying to get the ones that have the fewest number of bugs in them, I think is probably the way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we're going to have one, two, three, four. Four of these are going to go to RC2, which is like kind of expected, uh, given the timing of everything. And then this one here in Winget will go away. So that's the things that we knew about coming into uh, this last week. We fixed a whole bunch of other RC1 bugs that were just like, oh, that's a bug. Fix it. Oh, that's a bug. Fix it. And we do have a few that have come in in the last little bit that we uh, need to then triage and talk about, uh, about when they're gonna get done. Uh, chances that they go into RC1 at this time are very, very small. 
Uh, it's more of a question of do they go in the Wix 4 at all? Like we're gonna get to that point too where we're like, yeah, we're not gonna do that in Wix 4. We're gonna have more and more of those conversations. Um, so at this point, it's probably mostly about uh, the uh, timing of when we take these. RC1, RC2, I guess we could talk about RC3. We're not gonna talk about RC3 this week. Either goes today, next month, in the next month, time frame or let's kick it out kind of thing. All right, so uh, we already talked about this add.NET Core search uh, thing. In the last one, this is overlap. I think we can remove the triage and we'll put that in RC2. Um, someone pointed out that there is uh, 7067, that there is service install type enumerator for per user services. Per user services are a new thing in some Windows 10. I don't know how far back it goes. Um, and Christopher Painter went off and did a lot of work to go test and find all the things that did not work, which is kind of what I expected would happen is that the Windows installer doesn't fully support these uh, new things and it needs to. Let's see. Um, there's a couple bad ones, like you can't use start services to start them um, right off the bat. The ice errors, I'm less worried about if it just worked and there's some other things that have to be cleaned up. So Painter did a nice job in detailing all the things that have to happen here. Uh, I think we push this to V next because the one installer needs to catch up to it first. There's a lot that has to go on here to really make these things just work. Yeah, to be clear, also, it's, it's not clear that this is actually like exposed to the user. Um, the, you know, for example, create service documentation does mm -hmm. not discuss these bits. Yeah. Um, they were, I mean, clearly they were added um, for Windows own use. Um, you know, they're, what you install, I mean, everything is running in HKLM, so these aren't, you know, per user services. They're services that run in the context of a user, which, okay, pedantic, sure, but um, you still need to be elevated in order to create them. And what you're installing is what they call a template. And then at login, Scum will create instances of the template service. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is how useful is it if you can only start these things when you log in? I, Works I, great if you're a system, you know, if, if you're something for Windows yeah. um, and need, you know, user permissions, but... Yeah, I mean, it, this may be something that we're like, hey, you know, these are interesting enough. Let's build a custom action to finish the gaps that the installer has sure. left. Uh, yeah. But I think it's kind of a let's sit with all this knowledge and decide, all right, here's how we're actually going to tackle it. Um, or, oh, look, the installer team did solve it, which is a low probability that's going to happen right now. But we'll see. Pretty shocking, yeah. Uh, we'll see. I, 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 I don't know. Um, so I, it's it's interesting, and it needs and Christopher has done a great job detailing that it needs a fair bit of work. So I think this goes into um, a V next, unless someone really wants to say they're going to go and figure out how to tackle all this, and it doesn't end up being as much work as it kind of looks like it is. Um, so that's that's a whole lot of caveat. So uh, we probably need to tag this with a whip required. Oh, and sure. toss it in V next because it just needs a lot of work. At least yep, a lot of I thought agree. process. All right, while that's going on, Zach asked, could we put the cubes in a separate NuGet package so they're updatable separate from the SDK? We could do the work to put the um, cube, the the ICEs, the cubes in a separate extension or something like that and bring them down. We did not do that work in V4. The cubes don't change very often, so it's not like that's a big deal. And if you want, there are command line options on the Wix tool set to specify a specific cube because you can build them yourself um, and all that kind of good stuff. So there's like lots of functionality around using them. Honestly, what we need to do in the Wix tool set, and I don't know when we're going to do this, it's not a small task is we need to re-implement all those ICEs in the core tool set to do the validations and then get rid of them. They create lots of problems and they are very slow. And we, the, I would much rather spend time getting the tests validated inside the Wix tool set than trying to do more work around 
making their stuff work, given how slow they are. All right. Uh, 7068, yes. Burn should register install date. Uh, actually, a fire giant customer pointed this out to us, and I was like, wow, yeah, we don't do that. That's kind of cool. Uh, we should. Um, I anticipate this is going to be easy. I was going to sign up for it. I haven't had a chance. I'd hoped I'd get it done in RC1. I don't know that I'm going to, I have too many prep things I have to do today to get it done today. So I think this could go in RC2. Um, if someone else wants to take it, that's fine. But if nobody else does, I kind of feel bad that we're not writing this. So I'll go and um, fix it if nobody else gets to it before I do. Um, so uh, that's that. And I think it's going in RC1. The man, the myth, the legend. Yes, quite infamous. <laughs> Infamous usually means bad. I, I know. that's. I, I, anyway. do, I don't think that really applies. I don't he's, think that's the word so you nice. think it, it I don't think that word means what you think it means. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so. so do you want to, uh, sorry, I, I missed it if you said, do you want to keep this in RC2? I think it's, it, it'll, it's going to go to RC2. I, I, I really hope I get to it before today. I just ran out of time. So I'm not going to be able to get it done today. I guess I'm asking if, you're keeping it in for. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. It, uh, unless it turns out to be really hard to do, and that, but it just it shouldn't, right? It should. It's just one yeah. more bit that travels with all the other bits. It's not like it needs extra processing. It just needs to get set in a reg key along with the other eight yep. reg keys or whatever, twelve reg keys that get set there at the exact same time. I hope it's very straightforward. The hard part is actually is like I don't know how the install data is stored in the registry. I've never looked, so I, that's like, I have to go figure it's, that out. First it's step. It's a string in a particular, you know, format. That's okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> um, you also have to decide when to update it. Uh, right. This is why. This is why Raymond's blogs about you know about the the mystery of why things happen in ARP are always so fun because if you don't provide an install date the shell will go try to figure it out and yes like, why doesn't it just leave it blank but whatever yeah, yeah but when do we want to update it yeah 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 no no never, I know. never it's, only at the beginning i only on initial install yeah or, or repair no not repair i don't think so what about what about a minor upgrade uh burn minor upgrade Everything's under the bundle ID, right? Yes. So it'd be a new bundle. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, it's the install date, the initial install date. That was what I read, but I could have misread it. I don't Patch think it, bundle? Huh? Patch bundle? No, it's a separate bundle. Like a, that'll get its own date. Yeah, that'll get its own date. Okay. Yeah. My hope is that it will get written once and then never be written again. I'm hoping that's not hard. I am, you know, like, yeah, get set once right in the beginning, never touch it again. I don't think we do that today. Well, I guess I, yeah, I'll, I'll go find out. Okay. <laughs> like I said, it could be harder than I'm hoping it's not. We'll see. <laughs> um, like I said, I hoped I got not, to okay. it earlier this week. I just didn't have time. And now it's the day before. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But oh my gosh, if it takes me more than a couple of days plus grading a unit test, then 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 we'll I'll rethink my life. Um, Seven oh six nine Wix SDK should be documented. Bob, what? This is bits and pieces. This was basically me opening a bug to show work that I was already doing. Um, okay. Primarily, it was the um, it was generating web pages for the XML doc comments that we already had. It started out with DTF. DTF had um, you know, documentation, API documentation. And you know, we're, we didn't want to use Sandcastle and create chums and whatnot. So I wrote the tooling to replace Sandcastle for the subset of stuff that we need. And it's you know, faster and better. Um, than Sandcastle, which could be gnarly. Um, then it occurs we have the documentation 
issue public type should be documented that also I opened um, and we've done a uh, a job I won't characterize the quality of the job um, in you know, providing doc comments on all of the public types like in Wix toolset data um, and some of those other assemblies um, so that's now done um, I did include in here that we should put up documentation for the native stuff, um, which I don't know why I did it, because it's going to be a pain. And we haven't done it before. But it's certainly theoretically possible that we could um, adapt the existing comments that we have, like in the deutal headers, um, into something that could be read by a tool like Doxygen and then processed in the web build like we do today for the schemas and the managed uh, doc comments. I'm not proposing that this is something that will happen before RTM just because I don't know how much work is involved. And I also, to be honest, don't know that, you know, um, we're going to have a uh, if there's a huge call for it, yeah, it's native C++. Lots of people use it, but lots of those people are probably comfortable reading the comments on you know, the header files. So. But I think we should do it at some point. So what are you doing with this issue? Um, I'm fine opening it in the web milestone and uh, everything except the native is now done I see. for four. So I find keeping this open, uh, you know, for me to investigate the native story. Got it. But I, I don't see. think it has to be, you know, part of four. Got it. So this comment saying, hey, the managed part is done from the point of view of this issue. Then it just needs a comment that says, hey, the native part of this is done, whatever that means. And then this issue can be closed? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So I will take it and I will put it in VNext or web, whatever. All right. Okay. V3 to V4 conversion of a merge module isn't as pretty as a package. Christopher has a nice picture that shows how merge modules are not uh, formatted as nicely as the packages are. Ron did a lot of that work to make things look quite pretty and not of it has been applied to modules. Um, does someone want to take this? I, I'm not going to get to this. So it's like, someone want to work on it? It could go into RC2 if someone wants to pick it up. Give the chat a second, because I don't think, knowing Bob and Sean, neither one of them is going to step forward. So I'm kind of holding out to see if there's anybody else out there that wants it. Because it's merge modules. It's like, yeah. Uh, use Wix libs. I'm kind of curious. I'm curious why. Oh, it has to do with deleting elements and that kind of stuff that you have to do a lot of work if you delete an element to maintain the white space. Oh, right, right. We're like deleting said, the... Like yeah, okay. what Ron did this and I looked at him like, oh my gosh, that's a whole lot more than I would have done. <laughs> and then it turned out that I did something following the pattern that he put in place. I forget where, I forget which thing I did. And it worked and the white space worked. And I was like, wow, it really does look better. <laughs> oh, it moved a comment too. It moved the comment up above. I mean, it right. just, it looked really nice. I was like, yay, that, that was awesome. I wasn't willing to put that amount of effort in it, but Ron did. So it was great. This needs, you know, some part of the merge module needs more of that kind of love and care. So, all right. I don't know. Uh, that's unless someone wants to step up and pick it, that's probably going to slide into, I don't know, the, I'm not going to say be next. It's going to turn into someone wants to pick it up kind of thing. It's not a high priority. It's not a breaking issue, fortunately. Everything works. So that's how much of this could we could we do with like running a format command after the convert? 
we would mess up a lot of the white space. Really? Yeah, I mean, yeah. The fo- oh, the format com- the format command I don't think is going to do anything better than what's in there. Oh, it wouldn't it wouldn't I mean the the problem seems to be the lack of a new line. Yeah, format something like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I don't know. have to go play with it. So, what are we doing? Um, it's I, I think that's a perfect example of uh, given an orientation on merge modules. I can still look at, into this issue. Yeah, Ron, I don't think you have to know anything about merge modules. It's the same thing. It's just more white space manipulation of XML. It's probably the harder part is, you know, and there's an example in pictures, not text, but in pictures that you could write and you'll see it'll convert this little picture to that where it could be formatted prettier. So anyway, that would be the issue. So for wrong with otherwise it turns into one of those buckets that we need to talk about, which I want to talk about when we get a little bit less doing triaging and talk about the uh, the suspend bucket or the, the respawn, that area. I have and spend some time on that. This is one of those that goes there. Hey, if someone wants to pick it, uh, they could go from there. So, all right. It sounds like Ron and Chris might get together and make this happen. So, um, how about we just slide RC two since Ron's kind of expressing some interest, and we'll see if it happens. If it doesn't, that's fine. It will not happen in RC two. I think that's probably where we go now. That works for me. All right. Seven zero eight two include full burn version in log. That makes sense to me. The uh, number is four zero 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 zero. It'd be nice. If it was a full semantic version. So yeah, that would be nice. Are we storing the full semantic version on the product version in version info? And can I say version more? <laughs> I think that's where that's where it lives in the assemblies. Yeah. I don't know where we put it in burn. I also think it gets overwritten when burn during the burn build to whatever the version that the user specified for the bundle. Oh. Yeah, it'd have to be hard coded in the code. Yeah. Or Got it'd it. have to be in the code. Right. Lots of interest in someone picking this up, huh? I'll pick it up. Sounds interesting. All right. Not bored. All right, Bob. The rest are no, not all yours. Uh, actually, these all end up being yours. <laughs> all right. Seven zero eight eight. API doc Jenner has bugs. So this is a catch all of things to complete. Um. Yeah, I wanted to get down on paper, oh, quote unquote. Here. Um. What. What, what's weird? All right. It looks like I could drag these things around. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> well, you could actually if you have. No, it's fine. I, I just, I was unprepared for that. That's all. Um, it's uh, the, the <laughs> checkboxes are, are actually really nice. There's a lot more behavior to them than I realized. Anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, so there's, there's a bunch of weaknesses. In, in the XML doc to markdown generator. Um, some of them, you know, make for unpleasant looking doc, but, you know, are, are otherwise functional. Um, and I just wanted to get the doc. I wanted the doc in place for RC1. So um, I decided, yeah, these are annoying, but, you know, we can live with them for RC1. So um, I opened this issue to track all of the, the known issues that I want to tackle you know, over time. Cool. So this goes in the web milestone again? Um, yeah, I'm fine with that. This is you know, all showing up um, you know, on the website. So, and there should be no impact on the build. So. All right, into the web. 
Uh, 7089, same thing for the schema doc. Although yeah. a much shorter list. Well, yeah, that's because I found one. On that URL, I found that we were doing something dumb and something that I had solved for the API generator. So uh, there's code that we can share that I think would make the uh, the schema doc better. All right. So uh, same as the last one? Yeah. Groovy. All right. Last thing, 7090. Uh, I mentioned I hit this, I think, to Bob, and he's like, yeah, I should do that. So uh, we now have an update feed for the Wix additional tools bundle, and I found that should the update feed fail for any reason, the whole install process halts, and that seemed um, overly aggressive to me for Wix MPA. Anyway, so then... Bob said he'd take it, although he didn't sign it to himself. Um, and you have lots of updates on it, Bob. Um, not really. Um, I left it open because I, I fixed the bug and then added a test. And the test revealed that updates don't get checked in quiet mode, which makes perfect sense to me and is explicitly how I wrote it when I added update feed detection to Wix standard BA. Um, and then I had a second thought about it. Well, wait, should it? Is that right? So I left the issue open, and then thinking about it later, I just said, yeah, that's the correct thing to do. So there's really nothing to triage here. Um, I, will... I agree. <laughs> I, well, so the reason I discovered this, of course, is that, you know, I had Sh uh, Sean being a little angel and or devil on my shoulder going, oh, you should add a test for this, a runtime test. And I did that, and it took me longer than I would have liked. And then I went, oh, bloody hell, it doesn't matter because update detection doesn't happen in quiet mode. <laughs> so there's now a test that is testing something that will never, ever fail. Yeah, okay. Well, should we add a command line parameter where they can opt in to that? Well, Probably see, not that, the question you wanted. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it kind of is. I mean, that's basically the question I was asking. You know, should there be, you know, should that be possible? And I'm like, right now, I'll say no because. I'm not sure what the what the flow is like. I mean, in quiet mode, okay, so do we, you opt in, there's an update. I don't know, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how that would work. Um, I mean, like, in quiet mode, would you relaunch yourself in quiet mode to do the update? I mean, that's how you would have to do it. I'm not sure that that's... Yeah. But I agree it would have to be opt-in. So... Yeah, Jacob, the, there, there is a test there. And, you know, you could... Um, you could f force it. I mean, that's like the... Um, oh, yeah, okay. Well, sure. It could be authorable, um, but I don't want to tackle that in V4 in RC mode. So I think for the moment, the answer is no, it won't try to auto update. And I will leave the test, which was my next question. If the test can ever fail, should I just remove it? I'll leave the test so that, you know, if we revisit that, we can, you know, add the switch or whatever. Okay. Cool. So is the change going in for RC1? Um, okay, today. <laughs> yes. All right, cool. Because it's done. Yeah, so. I just want to make sure I'm mentally prepared for 
if the bundle starts failing because of glitches on or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, Which way should it be going? So, all right. Okay, okay. I think that's it. Yeah, Jacob, I'll add a comment. Okay. All right. Good stuff. So that went essentially as I thought it would. Uh, we have, I don't know if I hit refresh, is everything going? Yeah, look, everything's gone away. We come back over here to our 4.0 issues. We've gained a few. And only this one down here is going to be in RC1. Cool. Everything else is in the RC2. So we have one, two things expected. Well, 601, the Winget will be fixed after RC1, but like right after RC1. And the 7090 will be fixed today, as in just before RC1. And tomorrow's all about pushing RC1. All right. Woohoo. That's triage. Thank you, everybody. Other things people want to talk about questions, comments, other stuff going on out there. How could you have anything else? It's all about RC1. Um, RC1 has a bunch of bug fixes in it. That's really all it is. Um, yeah, lots and lots and lots and lots of bug fixes. We've pushed lots of updates to the website. Um, and so that's there. I guess we'll probably do more of that, but I don't know. we'll see. Maybe we found a thing. I'm, I'm very curious in RC1 to see how much new, how much more stuff is found. I am confident there will be more bugs found as we get more people kicking the um, can along. That's not really what I wanted to say. Um, as people involved. start testing the software, using the software in their systems, we'll get I more. I think you meant kicking the tires. Maybe that's it, kicking the tires. Yeah, that's probably the one I wanted. Um, I just, he's a soccer fan. I would have expected ball, but. Kicking the ball down the road. But I was trying to do road. And, anyway, it was just, I don't know where I got that. It didn't work. That's all I know. There. Um, so next week, we, like my kids go on the holiday break. And so I don't know how much the world is really going to be online. Um, but that's okay. We knew that would happen with the timing of this. So I, we're going to have RC1 go out. We'll mention it. We will put up the announcements that, hey, RC1 is here, all that kind of stuff, and see what comes in over the next couple of weeks as all of you in chat should definitely pick it up and try it. All of you listening uh, later should definitely be picking this up and trying it. And all of you that see the announcements should pick it up and try it. And I understand a lot of you might not have a chance to until next year. That's okay because next year then my plan is to start pushing very hard that Wix 4 is almost done. So where the preview was like, hey, here it is. It's cool. You should try it. RC1 in the new year turns into, yeah, no, we're almost done. So if you don't use it, then that's, you know, you're going to miss out. You miss out on your ability to uh, let us know how it works for you. So release schedule again. Zach wants me to go back to the reschedule. The release schedule is we December 16th comes out. How much time between our, uh, how long, what, how much time between RC1 and RC2? One, two, three, four, currently says five weeks. Granted, two of those are holiday weeks, generally considered holiday weeks. So there'll be three weeks in the new year of people saying, oh, here it is. So we'll be pushing hard on RC1. RC2 will come out. I do not believe that RC2 is our RTM build. The idea is that people should be grabbing RC1, we'll be fixing whatever bugs are kind of floating along, put them in RC2. There will very likely be an RC3 in the mid to late February, you know, roughly a month after January's date. So like the 17th or something like that, we'll see. Um, and that's where we start, I hope, saying, huh, are we done? Is this it? That, I, that would be pretty decent. I mean, later than I'd like, I'd like it to be uh, January. Maybe it'll be RC2 where we're like, but no, I mean, I'm pretty confident we're gonna have to wait for RC1 push through January and then we'll see what we get in February saying, yeah, that might be it, we're done, yay. Um, so in that case, do we wanna have a meeting on the 29th? I could be here. Um, I'm not going anywhere this holidays. Would other people show up? Uh, we might have stuff to triage at that point. We might not. Honestly, in most of these cases, things that are clearly RC bugs, we just go and fix it. 
Um, so we're not, in a lot of cases, we're not triage. We're not waiting for triage to fix bugs that are clearly bugs um, in the RCs. Or error in preview zero or preview one either. Um, so, uh, Sean, Bob, you guys, what do you think? Should we skip next week or, or on the 29th or should we go to the 29th? I say skip. I don't think we're going to, you know, have a lot of issues that require actual triage. Yeah, I think so. All right. I think that's true. So do we want to shift our Thursdays and jump on the 5th? Or do we want to just slide to the 12th? The 5th, if we move it to the 5th of that, then we would have two triages, one on the 5th and then one right before RC2 again, if that meant something. Yeah, there's something to keeping to that, Caden. The 5th and the 19th kind of thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. All right. And that would put us back on the other Thursday schedule, which I don't know. I've given up trying to understand anything. It's just I just react now, <sighs> given the way everything's going. You realize... You're the one setting the schedule. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it's just chaos. And I just try to push things around whatever works for most of the rest of the world. So um, I think the fifth is a good idea. So let's say that's our next meeting, which is in three weeks. We will be back in three weeks, not two. Um, on January 5th, 2023, we will be talking a lot about people needing to pick up RC1. Uh, we might triage some things, but honestly, most of the bugs that have come in have been pretty clearly bugs. I take that, I mean, we've had a couple that where it's like, oh, not clear and left it for triage, but a lot of things are just like, oh yeah, bug, oh yeah, bug, oh yeah, bug. So um, yeah, that's it. We're on our way out. RC2, I think we'll collect, hopefully we'll collect lots of the bugs and either it will be the release that people pick up for us to get on schedule to be done, or maybe our late RC1 people. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the incoming looks like. I think by the 19th of January, our meeting on the 19th of January, so that's two meetings from now, not the 5th, but the 19th, I hope we'll have something of a better feel of how much is left um, in Wix 4. And it's entirely possible that we may start talking about Wix 5 at that time too. If there's not a lot to triage, then we'll start talking about what is Wix 5 and how do we start um, structuring that and putting it together. I don't want to do that until we know that we are safely in the clear on the schedule for Wix 4. But uh, if we start getting bored, not having anything to do in Wix 4, then yeah, we'll go run over to Wix 5. Um, we'll see possible futures. So I think I feel enough time for anybody anything else they want to talk about. They should probably have written it in chat. And we will be back January 5th in the new year, 2023 for Wix meeting 249, I think. This is 248. So just before RC2 should be meeting 250. That feels like a lot. 250 feels like a lot. 248 Feels like quite a few, but 250 sounds like a lot. Hmm. All right. So, barring any other last minute things, January 5th, 9.30 Pacific time right here. We'll be back. We will be talking about the uh, continued release plan of, at that point, RC2 and how well RC1 is doing. And, uh, yeah, anything else that you guys have to talk about at that time? So, until then... We're pushing RC1 out tomorrow. Then we're going to be looking and fixing at bugs that people find from there. And we'll see you guys all in the new year. Later. Bye. Bye. Bye.